Hi guys, today I'm going to go over with you how to install the bearings and the blade grips for your T-Rex 450 Pro or pretty much, this pretty much goes for any helicopter with this type of design. Um, the first thing you're going to need, other than your bearings of course, um, is two uh, 1.5 millimeter hex drivers. I'm using a hex driver and just a regular Allen key. Um, you're going to need pliers. I'm just using ball link pliers, but you could pretty much use anything. Um, you need something to punch the bearings out with. I'm just going to use this 2 millimeter hex driver. You're going to need Loctite, 242. 243 is good too. Retaining compound. I use Loctite 680. You could use 609 or this stuff, or you could just use the little green bottle that came with your helicopter. You're going to need some grease. I use white lithium, uh, but once again, you could use whatever works. Um, a cleaner, because you're going to have to clean the retaining compound out of, uh, out of the grips, stuff that's left over from before. Um, obviously, a new feathering shaft if you crashed, and any hardware that goes with it. Um, a few other items are a heat gun or a regular lighter. I used a lighter before I got a heat gun, but if you're in this hobby for the long run, it's probably a good idea to get a heat gun. And you're going to need a rag, because you don't want to burn your fingers. Alright, now let's get started. First thing, obviously, um, you're going to want to disassemble, disassemble the head. And that's where, that's where the two hex drivers come in. I don't lose these for the obvious reasons. Whoop. Also, be mindful of these little aluminum washers because they're kind of important. But if you get a new feathering shaft, that actually comes with them. You could use your Allen key to, to push out the rest of the thrust bearing. Now this one I got out. Let's see. It doesn't want to come out. There it goes. Now also don't lose these because none of these parts come with these little spacers and they're they're very important. If you lose them, your helicopter is not going to fly properly. And you're probably going to crash. And you're gonna have to do this again. <laughs> All right. So now you got the shaft out, but you still got the thrust bearing on one end. And if you're saving the thrust bearing, these are still all right. You're gonna want to, you know, take it off the shaft. Um, if your shaft is still good, you're gonna want to put a rag between the pliers and the and the feathering shaft because you don't want to damage it. But in this case, this one's just a little bent, so I don't really care. I believe you could also get a special little grippy tool that has a one-way bearing in it to hold the shaft, but you don't really need that with a 450. All right. Now here's where the heat gun comes in. These bearings are held in with with retainer compound, so you, you're gonna have a hard time just trying to punch them out with something like a hex wrench. So you got to heat up the grip first, and you're going to want to hold it with something. I'm just using, you know, a big pair of tweezers. You could use pliers or really whatever works. All right. Now it's easier to get the outer bearing out before you get the inner bearing out. So grab that guy with your rag, take your tool, whatever you're going to use, and just kind of stick it in there. Pry the bearing out. 
I might need to reheat it to get the other one out. Right, hopefully I don't have to. There it goes. All right. Now discard your old bearings, put them aside. Now you've got two empty blade grips. Now what you're going to want to do is is clean the compound you know, out of the holders. Otherwise, it's you're gonna have a hard time getting new bearings in, and it might affect the way the the lot the retaining compound holds the new ones in there. Um, I just use this stuff. Uh, you could use denatured alcohol. Uh, don't really use anything solvent based, because I might actually I might actually damage uh, the sealant on the anodizing finish. And you can just use a Q-tip. Don't forget both sides, you want to clean both sides. want to make sure um, everything dries before you apply the retaining compound. This stuff dries pretty quickly, so I don't really have to wait. <clears throat> then you're going to take your new bearings. Also clean them off. I have a little bit of oil left over on them. fun part. Alright, um, so my camera actually died before and I didn't realize it, so I went ahead and, uh, and removed the bearings from, from one of these blade grips to show you how to do it. <laughs> As you can see, I've already got one, uh, one set installed. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your Loctite 680 or whatever retaining compound you're using and just put a little tiny bit um, on a little pad, a little plastic pad, because if you apply it directly to the bearings, you're just going to put too much on there, and you don't want to do that, because then you'll never get the bearings out. Um, I use a little piece of music wire to, as an applicator. <clears throat> I also have this little button pusher that I got with a speed controller, um, and it helps to install the bearings into the, to the outside portion of the grip. But you don't really need to use one of these. Um, you probably don't have one. <laughs> but you could use pretty much anything uh, that'll work. Um, you could use you could use a, sm a small set of tweezers that'll that'll work just as well. I just like to use this because uh, it works pretty well and it's plastic and won't damage the bearings. What you don't want to do is use something that you actually push the bearing in. Um, on the actual shields, because then if you dent the shields, you're going to damage your bearings, and they're not going to they're not going to function smoothly, uh, and then you pretty much defeat the purpose of getting these nice new bearings installed in your helicopter. All right, so take your applicator, put just a little bit right on there, 
and you're going to apply it directly to the inside of the blade grip. You just want a little bit, so smear it around there, wipe off any excess. You don't want too much. If you put too much, it'll make its way into the bearing. And then you're going to take your bearing and you're just going to slide it right in there. And there you go. Make sure it's fully seated. Wipe off any excess and then move on to the other side. Now uh, this is where I use this little device. Stick it right on the bearing. Now, like I said, alternately you could use tweezers or whatever you have laying around that'll fit through the bearing without pressing on to the shields. Um, and for the inner bearing, you're going to want to apply the retaining compound to the actual bearing itself because it's not really efficient to stick it into the grip. You can't really see what you're doing. So you just want a little bit, just a little bit. This stuff is similar to crazy glue. So you don't want to put too much on there. It just dries a lot slower. But it's based on the same chemistry. Alright, so you got just a little bit on there. Go ahead and install it in the bearing. Make sure it's fully seated. Alright, um, so there you go. You got the bearings and the grips, but you're not quite done yet. Next come the thrust bearings. You know, with the thrust bearings, you want to make sure that the side with the larger hole goes on the inside, and the side with the smaller hole goes on the outside. If you do it the other way around, it won't function properly, and your helicopter's not going to fly well. Alright, so go ahead and put that on there. Um, get your grease. <coughs> Excuse me. And take the take the roller part of your thrust bearing and keep it with the cup end up and apply just a little bit of grease right in there. Right. You don't you don't need to put too much because it's just going to fly out and get all over your blade grips. Um, but you are going to want to make sure that that the little cup end is facing towards the towards the rotor head not towards the blade grips because if it's facing towards the blade grips you're just going to lose all that grease and, and the bearing is going to probably eat itself pretty quickly so go ahead and put that on there also forgot to mention um, if you got a new feathering shaft you're gonna want to you're gonna want to clean the cutting oil out of the threads because when these things are, are are machined, you know they don't clean the oil off. And yeah, as you can see when you when you get the package, it's got oil in, in the actual package, so that oil is right in there, and it's gonna affect the way the thread lock works. It's not gonna work, and your head's probably gonna blow apart, and you don't want that <laughs> for the obvious reasons. So get your lock tight shake it up. It's also very important. If you don't sh shake the Loctite, it might separate and you might not get the part that that actually does the locking. You might just get the fluid it's suspended in. And I've heard stories about people saying the Loctite's not working because they didn't shake the bottle. So just make sure you shake the bottle. Okay? And apply it just a little bit you don't want too much because it'll start to seep out and apply it right into the actual threads. Alright? And take your screw. Also clean it off. You might want to use denatured alcohol. That's what I use on that on, on this actual shaft, which I don't really have in the video. I clean the screw off. Go ahead and assemble side one. And 
watch for any Loctite come out of there. If you see a lot come out, or any really, then you probably put too much. Um, don't worry about getting it too tight right now. I'm going to finish that up when it's actually installed, fully installed. Now, back to these little brass spacers. Don't forget to put the spacer between the thrust bearing and the radial bearings. The whole point of that is so the, the thrust bearing doesn't contact both the inner and outer race of the bearing. Uh, because if it does, then the thrust bearing is useless. It's not going to work the way it's supposed to. So the spacer um, makes it so that the outer race of the bearing is in contact with this with this thrust bearing and making it function properly. All right. So I'll go ahead and just insert that right in there. Side one. Then get your little aluminum spacers and stick one on there as well. And then uh, I like to use the actual hex driver to hold that shaft and grips together when you push the feathering shaft through the head, the actual head block. Um, you can put a little bit of grease on here as well. Also, what I like to do, um, so you don't get grease back into that feathering shaft that you just spent so much time removing, take a screw and just put it right in there. You don't have to put it all the way in, but just thread it barely in there. That's going to prevent any, any of the grease that's, you know, on your dampers from making its way into the feathering shaft. Go ahead and install that. Get rid of any excess grease. Alright. Go ahead and remove that guy. Don't forget your aluminum spacer. Yeah, put this aside. And you're going to repeat on the opposite grip, except here it's a little bit different. Determine what the larger hole is. Now the stock bearings are marked. These guys are not. That's not really a big deal because it's pretty obvious. You can tell that, that this hole is bigger than that one. So this is the one that you're going to want to put on the inside of the blade grip. And this is the one that's going to go on the outside and it's going to contact the washer on this screw. All right. And this is where a tool like this comes in handy, but just for the sake of this video, since you probably don't have one of these, I'm going to go ahead and use just a regular set of tweezers. Once again, don't forget your grease. Just a little bit. That right on there. The larger one goes on the inside, and go ahead and throw your space around there as well. And then take your grip and just lower it right on there. And then probably going to notice that. It's not going to want to come off, so just use your, use like a, a hex wrench to hold that thrust bearing in there. And whoops. Pull this guy out. There you go. Get everything in there. Once again, you're going to want to apply the thread lock to the inside of the threads, not onto the screws. If you put it onto the screws, you're going to get thread lock all inside that thrust bearing, and it's going to gum up, and you're going to have some notchy grips, and it's going to affect the way your helicopter flies. Alright. Whoops. 
Be careful not to lose your thrust bearings, like I almost did. Alright. Take your screw. Put it right in there. And hold your blade grip. Make sure the spacer is on here. And go ahead and carefully insert that in there. And start the screw. Okay. Now get your hex, hex wrench. And, oops. Oops, having a little trouble here. <laughs> What is wrong with me? Go ahead and carefully snug that up. I need to get it too tight. There you go. Nice and smooth. All right, and that's it. Now you know how to properly replace the bearings on the rotor head of your T-Rex 450 Pro or Sport or pretty much any helicopter with this kind of head design.